welcome back to another episode of the London's Pretty Cool Podcast. I'm Erin. And I'm Patrick. And we are back with another amazing episode for you guys this time. We are here with Tiffany Assel, the uh, PR for CCMAs, which are the Canadian Country Music Association Awards. They are coming to London again, November 26th to 29th. We're so excited to talk to her all about the amazing things that are gonna happen for Country Music Week the weekend before and what we can expect for everyone who wants to come out and experience all the great country music that's going on in the city. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, Tiffany. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. The countdown is officially on to London, so it's kind of like perfect timing for us to get caught up. This is perfect, yeah, you can map it out while we're mapping it out, it's fantastic. Yes, together. You know, you might get really excited. I might get increasingly anxious, you know, but <laughs> we're all here together to do this together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so for our listeners, could you introduce yourself and get, give everyone a little background of your involvement with the CCMAs? Yeah, sure. Um, as you so nicely said, my name is Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Astle, and I'm actually the founder of Penelope PR. So we're the PR slash communications agency that manages everything for the CCMA. Um, fun fact is that this is actually my 11th show. So I'm pretty excited. We, you know, last year we're really looking forward to having a big like 10th year anniversary party, but alas, COVID as everyone. Um, but yeah, so we're, I've been with the show for yeah 11 years and Basically, what I do is I am very much involved in the day-to-day -day activities of everything CCMA all year round. I think a lot of people think that, you know, CCMA does this one show and that's kind of, oh, we do one show and then for the rest of the year, we don't really do anything or, or you know, they're not really working on things. But truthfully, they're busy all year round. I mean, a lot of effort goes into planning this week that we're all about to talk about. But also there's a lot of great initiatives. There's a CCMA foundation. They also have their clothing line, Live Country, which I'm wearing the shirt of right now. Um, so yeah, it's so I work with them year round to kind of make sure that everyone knows what they do all year, um, the exciting things they do. And then also I manage all media on site in London or in any host city that we go to. So that stuff is pretty exciting. You know, when you watch an award show on TV and you see like everyone backstage and getting their photos with their awards and doing interviews, I manage all that stuff on site when we're during country music week. So overall a pretty exciting gig <laughs> and getting to work with them for sure. So are really you exciting. Were you a big country fan before getting this gig or was it just like, oh, you kind of got into it and you got into country or was this like, oh, this. I mean, Aaron, you're going to get me in so much trouble. First <laughs> question out the gate and you're already getting me into trouble. Um, truthfully, I mean, I'm from the East Coast, so definitely grew up listening to country. My mom was a huge Shania fan. I mean, I don't know anyone's mom who probably wasn't a Shania fan. Um, but you know, my mom loves all of the very classic, you know, Vince Gill, Toby Keith, Keith Urban. That is my mom's jam. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, am now quite embarrassed to say that like, I would complain profusely when she put those on in the car. Um, definitely it wasn't a genre that I like to listen to. Then it just got worse for me in high school because my best friend, I don't know if you guys ever had a TV that did this, but my best friend's alarm clock was her television. Like she could set it so that the TV would come on to wake us up if we had to what? go something like, you know, if we had like choir practice or whatever. And she would wake up to CMT, okay? <laughs> so like, I felt like I was stalked by country music. Um, and it just, literally, I was always like, oh my God, this is so bad. Like, why am I listening to this? And then just, you know, as, things would happen. I'm living in Toronto, which I think people think isn't a country city at all. Um, living in Toronto and, you know, meeting people here and there and then ended up, I started my own PR agency and got a call from someone from a town that's only 45 minutes away from my hometown. Her name's Brandy Mills and uh, she's since been married. So different last name now, but she is the reason why I ended up working with CCMA and then truthfully, guys, this is what I will say. I 
definitely wasn't a fan, but now I can't think of a genre that I'd rather be in. The people are so amazing. The music is, and I'm sure if you guys are country fans by nature, the music is just so like full of heart and emotion and care. And actually the people, I have never seen artists or celebrities who care more about their fans and the enjoyment that their fans have when they're at a show. So all that long answer to say, I definitely was not a country music fan, but now I am, I mean, now I'm the one who gets made fun of because like, I literally know like every word to every song because I'm just so supportive of the actual humans who make the music. Like they're so amazing. Um, so I, that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm so thankful to have this actual job because I get to talk about them all the time. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't believe you have, uh, you have such a similar history to, uh, to us. I feel like, uh, we, we had a conversation before the episode being like, should we bring up the fact that we, uh, weren't like ever huge country fans growing up and everything like should we, and i was like no, no 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 don't mention that don't mention that at all like we, if it comes up maybe like we get we get really like in deep <laughs> questions about stuff and we can't answer it we'll we'll let them we'll let them know but that's we can't we can't like you know we can't let everybody know but yeah it uh, it really has been in the last couple of years orville peck uh was a big thing mm -hmm. for me to really get me into country and um We've had uh, a trip um, our family took to Nashville a few years ago, uh, lucky enough, and um, and just got to see like uh, the Johnny Cash Museum and, you know, so cool. really kind of were like, okay, this is a lot cooler than we thought it was. And, you know, there's like a lot more interesting stories. Erin will tell you, she's a huge Dolly Parton fan and everything, yeah. so. Oh my God, my mom, and this is something I left out of that first embarrassing story, but I think I also, you know, really fought against country because my mom would make my brother and I perform Islands in the Stream for all of her friends. Um, and to the point where at my wedding, my mom, I go up to the DJ and I'm like, my brother and I want to surprise my mom. We're going to do this song. And he's like, uh, oh, the DJ looked at us like so weird. And I was like, okay, well, just so you know, please have it on cue. Like we're going to sing this song. And then, um, without knowing my mom got up in the middle of dinner and looked at the DJ and like, you know, winked and whatever. And then the DJ's like, okay, so now the mother of the bride is going to sing a song. And then my mom got up and she is not, I'm telling you guys, like, I love my mother with all my heart, but her singing voice is not, you know, but we had all planned to like sing Dolly Parton Island and Kenny Rogers Island in the stream at the wedding. So we ended up the three of us singing. It was like this whole thing, but yeah, I mean, I feel yeah, Dolly Parton. If someone doesn't love Dolly Parton, there's like literally something wrong with them. I think she's I, gonna save the world. You know, queen. like she is queen. First, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the great thing about country music too, I think, is that I think it's one of the only genres that is really kind of stretching the boundaries across all things, right? Like you have someone like a Jade Eagleson who just put out a record that's legit going back to the days of Johnny Cash. It's like a very honky tonk, like super country record. Like when you think country music, that's what you think about. And then you have people like Mackenzie Porter, Lindsay L, you know, people who are really like pushing boundaries um, in country music when it comes to like cross genre work, right? Like Lindsay just did that big cheat codes um, do collaboration and Mackenzie's just had that huge pop crossover too. So it's really interesting because I think country, that's why country's like kind of welcoming everyone in. We're like, hey, we're here and there's all these amazing songs and artists for you to learn about. And yeah, I think it's, I think we're going to keep seeing more and more of people like us being like, I wasn't a fan, but hey, I'm here now and I'm really not going anywhere. Exactly. Like we're here for the party. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, speaking oh, yeah. of the party, um, this mm -hmm. is the second time the CCMAs has been hosted uh, in London um, before in 2016. Um, why uh, why did you guys decide to come back? Like, what uh, what made London such a great uh, a choice for re rehosting? Yeah, I mean, we've got to be honest when we talk about London and say that everyone in London loves music. Let's all be very honest about that. I mean, that's, you can't ignore that. Also, I'd be horrible if I didn't mention that you just became like UNESCO city of music. Like that is like a worldwide global 
you know, recognition saying that London's the place to go for music. So um, for sure, I mean, that plays a huge role. London's also had a lot of experience in hosting awards. You know, you guys have had the Junos, you've had C C CMAO awards a few times, and now we're coming back for the second time. Um, so your music knowledge is insane. Like it's so amazing, such a big music city. But also I would say, you know, both years, host committee has been so welcoming and so fantastic. The volunteers in London are like compared to none, you know, like even this year we were like, are people going to volunteer this year? I mean, everyone has a different level of, you know, comfortability with all the COVID stuff. Like what we had no idea, like what to expect, honestly. And of course, you know what? London has shown up. Um, it's shown up in every way, every single venue, every single, like everywhere in every way that we could ever imagine London has shown up. And so, I mean, I think if we had a choice, we'd be in London anytime they asked us to come back. So, uh, it's, it's, we're really, really excited. And as you said, 2016 was a party, mm -hmm. but when you think about how much country music has grown from 2016 to 2021, um, uh, we know the party is going to be even bigger. You know, we know that it's going to be just so wildly fun that I literally have a countdown calendar in my room saying, okay, this many more sleeps. Here we come. London or bust. I say, especially after COVID and everyone's been stuck inside for so long, it's just going to be a wild party that next weekend we're very excited for it. Well, in London too, I mean, that's another thing about London specifically is that you guys also have so much planned in the sense of like just things to do. And we were talking before we started recording about this is why kind of you guys started this podcast, but you know, just talking to the host committee, it's like they have holiday markets and lighting of the tree and the trains come like, honestly, it's such a bump in place that it's like, man, people I think the exciting thing is like, even if people don't really like country music or aren't sure about, you know, if they want to go to country music week, say if they go down to the holiday market or they go down to the holiday train, the likelihood of them then coming across like a performance by Robin Adelini or, you know, um, James Barker band or whatever, um, the likelihood of them meeting and seeing and coming across something like that and being introduced to country music, I think is also so exciting. So I think all that to say, lots of reasons why we love London, why I personally love London. You also have a really great vegan restaurant that I'm excited about, so. Is it the food spot? Yeah, good yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. I don't, there's two, I think there's two locations, but one's right in my neighborhood. We love it, it's great. <laughs> um, so let's get into kind of the nitty gritty. The CMA has happened recently. But so we have the CCMAs. Why do you think it's important for Canadian country artists to have their own awards? Yeah, I mean, I think all of our conversation is going to flow so well um, in, in this chat. But I mean, first of all, to think about all the things we just talked about, about how the genre has grown so quickly, you know, and it's honestly, when you look at country music, um, I don't have all the exact stats, but it is one of the only genres that like continues to grow at exponential rates. Like all of the people are still selling albums and concert tickets. And you know what I mean? Like if you look at some country, people are selling out Madison Square Garden. Like mm -hmm. this is stuff that is just like so wild to think about. You know, I think a few years ago, no one would have believed that that was possible. You know, I did interviews today with Mackenzie Porter and Dustin Lynch, because as you know, they're performing on the show together and Dustin couldn't stop talking about how cool Canada is. Like he did, he was there in 2016 and he cannot wait to get back and, you know, celebrate in Canada. And so I think the thing is, is like, we sometimes forget how many amazing artists we have here in Canada. I mean, a lot of them live in Nashville now, right? And are making a name for themselves south of the border, but they are first and foremost Canadian. Like they're so proud of that. You know, when you think about Tennille Towns and um, uh, Megan Patrick and Lindsay L and Mackenzie Porter, Tennille Arts, you know, Tennille Arts who had a first number one in the US this year, you know, it's, there's just so many amazing things happening for Canadian artists. And I think it's so important that we celebrate that. 
sometimes Canada, we can be, be a bit humble, you know, we're like, oh, we're cool. We're good. Same as you guys. I'm sure like I just told you that everyone thinks your podcast is amazing. You were both like, oh, gee, thanks. You. <laughs> like we're all like that. And so I think it's really, really important that, you know, we celebrate the wins with all of these artists who have worked so hard and are creating so much music. Um, it's, I just can't imagine it not having a whole show dedicated to how amazing they all are. Like, I think it would be really a loss for everybody, you know, not just the artists. Uh, that being said with it, you know, uh, we don't want to have any, any loss here. You know, there are three, uh, uh, three or four amazing days, excuse me, of, uh, of events happening leading up to the awards, the Canadian Country Music Week. And no losses mm -hmm. will be had on our part about uh, missing out on any of this uh these mm -hmm. incredible events going on uh so uh to start off uh everything's free which is super exciting um why is that uh, important for this event uh for for these uh for the lead up to this uh to, to these award shows to have the events be all free and uh, you know ability for everybody to attend yeah i think it's it this year it was like first and foremost you know to think about the community and what we've all been through collectively i think um we were talking earlier that you guys are, you know, born and raised in Ontario. And I'm not sure if you've had a chance to kind of travel outside of Ontario since the pandemic, but I did have the chance to go home this summer to New Brunswick. And truthfully, the first time I got there and went to go into someone's house, I stopped myself because I've been through 18 months of not being able to go anywhere except for my house. And, um, they all kind of found it really funny and strange because they hadn't lived through that, you know, but we in Ontario, all of us in Ontario have really had this time of being away from things we love, you know, be it live music, be it family, be it friends, being able, it being able to like grab a beer with your friend and enjoy a show. Like we haven't been able to do that. So it was really important to the CCMA coming into a community, especially a community in Ontario, um, to be able to provide those opportunities. And, you know, I mean, I'm, we're not going to dive super deep into COVID and how hard it's been for everybody, but also, you know, there are a lot of people who lost their jobs, a lot of people who weren't able to work during this time, you know, who have been trying to support their families. And we didn't want that to be a barrier for them to be able to enjoy the celebration, you know? Um, so we're really excited to be able to give that opportunity to country because let's be honest, country music fans live in and around London. Like y'all are nuts for <laughs> country music. So we didn't, we didn't want that to be like the reason people couldn't come, you know, I mean, there's already so many things that make it challenging to go to a live show in the sense of, you know, like a whole bunch of stuff. There's already, because of the pandemic, a whole bunch of stuff. And so we definitely wanted that to not be something that held people back from saying, going out with their friends to enjoy a show. And the shows are going to be epic. So people should not miss them for sure. <laughs> All the events are happening at the CCMA house, which is yeah. London Music Hall, which is great. If you haven't listened, listen to our episode with Brandon Eady, who does all the talent booking there at the London Music Hall. It's great. Um, but how did you choose this venue and how did that come to be, that kind of connection? Yeah, sure. So usually CCMA, it's not usually called CCMA House. Um, it's usually called CCMA um, Fan Fest. And usually it's outside somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but as we all know, November, late November in Ontario um, doesn't guarantee that we will have nice weather, <laughs> you know? Um, and truthfully, like I'm speaking from my own opinion, my own personal preference. I don't think I would go to a concert for four hours outside in the freezing cold. I like, I just don't think that's something I would want to do. <laughs> so we did look around at, I mean, we were in London a few times this summer looking at a whole bunch of venues, you know, that is just part and parcel of how we do this event going in and like looking at everything. And London Music Hall is just so cool. It has so many different spaces, right? I think there are four stages or something. I, I've only been through a few times, but like 
there's just so many different areas that you can do shows. So it could, you can have activations kind of everywhere. Also, people will be warm because they will be inside, which is awesome. Um, and it provides just an ability for us to like set up and make sure that artists and, and fans can like really interact with each other. Um, and so, yeah, when we were looking at everything, it just felt like a great place to kind of let bring people back together. And plus, it's very easy because of the space, you know, it's easy for us to say, like, all you got to do is go to London Music Hall. Like, you're not running around everywhere. You know, you get the opportunity to do a whole bunch of really cool things in one place. And you won't miss anything because you know exactly where to go. Um, because in other markets, sometimes we're, we have stuff all over, right? Like, like FanFest mm -hmm. is here and FanFair is here and then Songwriters is over there. And, um, but yeah, having it in one place and free. I think was very important just so we could make sure that everyone gets as much access as possible. Yeah, I can say for attending like Juno Fest where they have, which was great that they engaged all of these different venues. But if you're like, oh, I want to go see this band, but they're at Toboggan and then now I have to run over to call the office to go see this band. But it's like, I only have 20 minutes and I don't know what's going on. So it's a lot easier to just be like, I'm going to park it right in this one place and I'm going to see all of my favorite artists and not have to worry about running around and getting in again and all that fun no stuff. No storms, you know, stuff that could happen in, on November 26, 27, 28, 29. All right, so let's get into the really good stuff. Let's start talking about all these fun events. Friday night, starting off strong, is the Sirius X FM Top of the Country Finale Concert. So the big mm -hmm. name, the Reclaws, obviously, we like them, Bro another brother and sister duo, <laughs> love to see it. Um, but this is mainly a competition between three finalists, Raquel Cole, Tyler Joe Miller, and Kelly Prescott. Could you tell us a little bit about this competition, what people can expect, what does the winner get, all that fun stuff? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course I can. Um, this is something that the CCMA and Sirius XM work on every year. The goal is to find like the next country star, the next Canadian country star. And so these artists have actually been working hard all year round. So if people who are listening aren't familiar, they've kind of been like creating, there was, you know, semifinals before the finals and before the semifinals, there was a whole other voting process before that. So these three amazing, super talented artists kind of have been you know, working all year, creating content and videos that fans had to vote on to kind of like help them get to this place, you know? So now on Friday, they will go up and perform um, for some judges, not yet announced judges, because I don't think anyone wants any, you know, bribing, no kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so they will perform in front of judges and a crowd, obviously. And then at the end of the night, the winner will be announced. Um, and it's always really, really exciting. I mean, the winner takes home a grand prize of $25,000 and an invitation to a huge SOCAN writing camp which is generally um, a huge deal because the names that SOCAN brings are massive writers, you know, from kind of all over the world. So it is a really big opportunity to be able to attend one of those. Um, so yeah, it's a very exciting night. And then of course the evening ends always with a headliner. This year it will be the Rex, who we all love, as you said. Um, and they've had a huge year too, when you look at it. So I think people will be excited to see them you know, in Southern Ontario, close to where they're from. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it will be, it is always like the best way to kick off country music week because, you know, it starts and you can tell there's like nerve, nervous energy in the room because obviously they're trying to win like a huge prize. Like that's a huge prize. Um, and fans are always so amazing. They're like cheering on the person they want to win. You know, it is like, this the best energy and then when the winner is announced it's just like i get chills i got chills right now thinking about it like every year it's so awesome um and then the winner does actually get to like walk the red carpet at the ccma awards and generally present an award on the show so it's pretty cool. exciting for the winner you know um so friday night's definitely a night not not to be missed i mean none of the nights all these nights are so big that it's like literally but friday is a great way to kick it off with the rex and raquel and tyler joe miller and kelly for sure 
Yeah, like you said, the uh, the excitement in the air of uh, of, of winners and uh, and just like competition in music is, uh, and then having the party of like watching the records after that is just going to be, you know, so much fun. I love that they get to walk the uh, walk the red carpet too, and maybe present an award. That is just such a like like um, a prestige. Yeah, like, hey, feel feel the treatment that you might be uh, as soon expecting, you know, from, from now on or something. This is a little taste, a little taste of yeah, totally, taste, you know, totally. And I mean, when you think of someone like Tyler Joe Miller, for example, um, both of his first singles climbed the charts so quickly, like it was like something that never happens. His debut single went number one, so um, it's not like the the three who are competing haven't had success. Like Kelly Prescott, I'm not sure if you saw the video on on Facebook, but they surprised her with like her face on a billboard on the highway. Very um, cool. So all of them have had like amazing years, you know? So mm -hmm. to win would be kind of like the cherry on top of the Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so this competition is going to be stiff. It's not like, it's not like there's a person who's at the front and good, like we're all like, oh, Raquel's going to win it. Like, no, like, it is not. They've all had literally probably the best years of their career to date. And now they're going to go in there and like compete for this title. So it's going to be super awesome to watch. Do you have, which this might be a tough question, but do you have a personal favorite out of those three that you kind of want? Oh my God, I can't pick. That's like <laughs> asking me to pick my favorite child. I will never. It's not right. happening. Had to try. Had to try. Maybe if you were serving me beer at every single question or something, but <laughs> water, we're not getting that out of me. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, for Saturday, there are two events happening. Um, uh, from two to four is the CCMA Fan Fest. Um, is you mentioned uh, that uh, at earlier that it had kind of been retitled. Um, but, um, now it looks like we are still having something like that. Is yes. that right? What, what is the, yeah. what is the fan fest there? Fan fest is, so it is from two to four. It is basically the time when people can get as close to artists as possible. I mean, we are still living in a pandemic world right now, so it's definitely a bit different than our usual. Um, what it usually looks like is like taking photos and meet and greets and that kind of stuff. Um, this year still having access we're still going to do photos i think it might look a little bit different like it won't be the hugging photos that we're normally used to um but definitely there will be some artists available for like quick meet and greets and photos um and then also the fan fest is presented by pure country which means the awesome and amazing shannon ella will be on stage kind of interviewing all the artists so and it won't be like your typical tell me about your single it'll be like Hey Dallas, you have two dogs. Like, how's that puppy doing with the old dog? You know, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. So it'll be more fun, you know, lighthearted stuff. And so fans can learn kind of more about the artists on a personal level, you know, have that like personal interaction. And as I said previously, these country music artists, like they live and breathe for their fans. So this kind of they look forward to these interactions all the time and you know Aaron as you said we've all kind of been apart for this long so they, I think the artists are just as excited if not more than fans because they're like oh my god we can see people like real people not like on video zoom doing a virtual concert you know what I mean they're really excited about that for sure yeah and then uh, 6 p.m. is the CCMA house party, which sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. What's going on there? <laughs> it's going to be good. One thing that is happening between those two, which I just need to update because it's a brand new kind of news, is that mm. at 4 o'clock, kind of, I think it's called Dundas Square. Is there a place called Dundas, Dundas Square? Dundas Place? place? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but there's going to be a really cool pop-up concert by oh, um, Nate okay. Holler and Sasha. Um, so you might know Sasha from the song, What the Truck, What the Wreck Laws. Um, and Nate Holler has actually been like blowing up this year too. Um, he just had, a, he just has a song out now with the Wreck Laws and Brett Kissel called okay, Somewhere yeah. to Drink. So, um, so yeah, they're going to be doing, they're going to be like doing the warm up for the CCMA house party. So make sure if, if you're around there, make sure to catch that. And then, yeah, then we head right into the CCMA house party, which honestly is the craziest night of music at CCMA house. So it's got, you know, so many awesome performers 
and special appearances. So it's got like Sean Austin, Tim Hicks, High Valley, Andrew Hyatt, Jojo Mason, Tyler Joe Miller, Jess Moss, Luke, Stephen Lee Olson, who is like blowing up right now, Mackenzie Porter, Tim and the Glory Boys. And I've heard a rumor that our pal Dallas Smith will be stopping by for a little bit. So, um, so I think, you know, if anyone's planning to go, if they want to go and get like super bang for their free box, Saturday night, Saturday night's kind of, you want to get there early. Cause if you want to be like close to the stage to really be part of the action, um, it's going to be like an epic, I keep saying epic, but I feel like all of them are, but it's going to be like super exciting because um, everyone will be like performing or appearing or interacting with each other, which is also something I love watching artists do kind of just like be with each other, you know? Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to be super fun. Last day kind of of country music week, the Sunday, there yeah. is two sessions of the CCMA house on Plugged, which is an acoustic day everyone gets to go have a little chill day probably after having a little too much to drink on the Saturday night at the house party they can go when it's not too loud but why did you guys choose to do an acoustic day on Sunday <laughs> exactly uh well actually yeah I mean I didn't think about that but you make a very valid point you know everyone's gonna need to, I think we should probably be serving some electrolytes yeah what's that drink called like morning after or something there's a drink called morning after um no so ccma house unplugged is a version of the ccma songwriter series so in a typical year what would happen is we would have songwriter sessions kind of on thursday friday saturday with a very with a big one called the guitar pull on sunday um this year because truthfully when we started planning country music week y'all were still in serious lockdown. So mm. we were like, okay, we'll just do a show at Budweiser Gardens and that's it, right? But now as things have opened up, we've been able to add things to the planning piece by piece. Um, and so this one is like, I mean, I know not, not everyone wants to go to like super full bands, like crazy live performances um but this these two sessions are so incredible because not only are they acoustic so your head's not going to feel so bad if you're hungover but also it gives the artist an opportunity to talk about the actual song so when you see someone in a show they don't generally sit there and say well you know i was having a bad day and my truck broke down i i mean i don't know um but they don't usually sit and like actually talk about the song right like if you think about Tennille Towns for example and the song Jersey on the Wall there's a very personal story behind that song but if you don't know her or if you haven't watched an interview of her talking about that song you wouldn't know that right um this unplug the unplug series gives fans an opportunity to learn those stories so every artist will come and it will be in the round so every session has four artists and they will each play one song and then play one song and then one song. Um, so you'll hear, you know, about three songs from all four artists and they will talk about the songs. And also exciting is that what I think a lot of people don't know is a lot of the time artists are songwriters and performers, right? Mm -hmm. So someone will write a song for someone else and you don't even know that it's a song that they have in their repertoire, right? Um, so that is also something that's exciting because then they can perform that song as well and you would, you'll you learn something totally new. Like, oh my goodness, Lindsay L wrote that song for whoever. Mm -hmm. um, and so they get to talk a little bit more about themselves, not just from the artist perspective, but also from just being a songwriter and how their songwriting process works. And I think when people are interested in music, a lot, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really interested in that process. Like how do they go into a room and sit down and come out with a song? Like, how does that happen? Uh, and these two sessions will give fans that kind of information. So, you know, how did Jade Eagleson write that hit song that has over a billion views on the video? Like, how did that happen? He will tell you on that day. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I love songwriter circles. Uh, me and Aaron have attended a few of those before, and it is always really cool to to get that like extra bit of time to really dig deep a little bit. I love that you were like, your truck broke down. There was such a great little stereotypical country thing to, 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 a, to a lyric. I loved that. That was just so funny. Well, it came up in my brain because um, in the interviews Mackenzie did today, she mentioned that she has a song coming out on Friday called Pick Up. So truck was just in my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she posted on Instagram a picture of she must have been shooting the video or something. Anyway, it was all stuck in my brain. But I feel like, you know, trucks are very serious. Like James Barker Band just put out a song with Dirk Bentley about trucks. Like, I feel like everyone writes about trucks. Hardy has a song about trucks. It's a very four and, you know, rec laws, what the truck. Everybody loves trucks. Monster truck, you know, they all love trucks. Trucks. <laughs> very true stereotypes where it's like we can make fun of it but it is true they all have their right. exactly yeah. so yeah and for some listeners who maybe they don't have all day to go to both of these sessions is it is there a difference really or is it both kind of the same and you just kind of choose your favorite artists that you'd like to go see they will both be very similar um for sure i think yeah your best bet is to like look at who you might want to see or songs that you might want to know one thing i will give a little like scoop to anyone listening to this because maybe no one else will know but um griffin palmer who's playing in the first round he actually has written songs for some of the biggest names in nashville um he has a keith urban cut he was also on the show um songland so um and he has not put out a song of his own yet. Um, so if anyone is like super into like fit, fun, like hearing the new stuff and learning what's up coming in country music, I would say that first session, um, Griffin will have some great stories to tell, I think. Um, but all of the artists who are performing are legit true artists and hearing them play with an acoustic guitar and just their voice is going to be so special for sure. Such a nice throwback for country music too. Like just bringing it back to the roots, you know, of what it is mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Something that I was seeing come up, I didn't really see it too much on the CCMA's website, but through like London Music Office, there is an MDM recordings plugged in show on the Sunday evening that mm -hmm. local artists are trying to get votes for to be able to open up. Three local artists will be able to open up for this. Yep. Could you tell us a little bit about that show or in its association with the CCMAs or? It's actually not. So the great thing about coming together, everyone coming together, it's kind of like a family reunion. We do it once a year. <laughs> um, but the great thing about it is because everyone is together, which generally doesn't happen. Like, let's all be honest. All the record labels have all these country artists, but they're never in the same city at the same time. Like it's generally does not, well, truthfully throughout the year, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. unless they're getting together for like their holiday Christmas party, which is private or, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't happen in a public way outside of country music week. So that is like something that's super exciting. So around all the official CCMA programming, there is all this other stuff happening. Like there's a Lindsay L show on Friday night. There is a JBB show on Saturday night. Like there's lots of other stuff that is happening. MD the MDM party on Sunday. Um, and I think that's also so amazing for fans because like you have this like huge breadth of any like all these events you can go like at all these events you can go to so sadly about the mdm party i don't know the specifics because um i don't specifically work for mdm um but i do know they're an amazing group of people who love like their roster is actually on tour right now together i don't know if you've seen that um and they like literally all love each other so I think whoever wins that opportunity to like perform there will just be welcomed in as like part of the family. And they're so lucky, whoever the winner is for sure. Uh, now as for awards day, awards day, the Ooh, big day. Big day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how, uh, how can listeners get tickets first of all to attend? Well, just by going to the Budweiser gardens website, there's a huge thing that says they're a CCMA award. Like you can't miss it. 
Um, and that's the only place everything's going through their box office. So it's super easy, just one place, head on over there and grab them. Um, I think also, I mean, if people want to try their luck, I think a few radio stations in London are doing some giveaways. So you can always try that. Um, I think also on the Saturday night CCMA house party, there will be a chance to potentially win access to the red carpet. Ooh. So I would strongly suggest that people go there um, if they want that kind of access. Um, there will be no tickets to the red carpet. Like no one gets access. It's like only if you win an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, so there's that. But I think, yeah, there are a few ways to win to get in. Tickets are now going quickly. You know, we had a little slow start. But it's like everyone was like, oh, my God, this is happening like in you know, a few sleeps. I got to get on this. And so I would say try your luck with the giveaways if you want. But really, if you don't want to miss the night, for sure, go and grab those tickets. Because as I said, they're now going pretty quickly. Very exciting. Um, it's hosted by Lindsay Allen Priyanka, the winner of Drag yeah. Race Canada, which is super yeah. exciting. Um, how did the host get chosen this year? And um, why did you choose these two uh, in particular? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm not a part of the talent committee, so I don't know the like specifics of how all the decisions were made. But what I will say is it's been a huge year, year of learning for everyone, you know? And I think one of the things uh, we've learned is that every, like, I mean, not that we've learned it, but like everyone loves country music. And I think maybe sometimes it doesn't come, like it doesn't seem like that kind of community, but it truly is, you know? Mm -hmm. And th when this idea kind of bubbled up, when it came up, all of us were like, oh my God, this is, this is a way, this is a way we can start and say, guys, hey, we're here and you're here and we all love country music and like honestly i've been on so many calls with priyanka who i am now obsessed with like i mean i watch canada's drag race it was great but now knowing her as a human being um i've learned so much from her you know she she said that you know people think that country music doesn't play a huge role in drag but it's she's like actually it's huge like every show when you think of, when i think about performances it's shania twain it's dolly parton it's you know all those people and you know priyanka as mark actual mark mark said you know country was a huge part of his whole coming out story because it, he's like at gay bars that is a huge thing you know they're playing mm -hmm. and we're screaming and enjoying and loving ourselves to this soundtrack. So, and I think, you know, this provides CCMA with the opportunity to say, look, no matter what people think, wherever people are in their heads or how they think about country music, it is a very inclusive community. And this is like the first step in showing that kind of to the world, you know, mm -hmm. to everyone. And then Lindsay, I mean, Lindsay's had an incredible year. Um, you know, she was also just named as host of Canada's Got Talent. She has, you know, got a number one in the U.S. last year. She has two number ones in Canada. And she's the most nominated female artist at this year's award. So five nominations. Um, and I think also, you know, it's so amazing to have a female, two females hosting a country music award show. It is just like, it makes my heart beat so fast with pride. And I'm so excited about it, you know. Um, and Lindsay, which people probably won't know because um, it's not a public facing event, but Lindsay did host the gala award in 2019. So she kind of like wet her whistle, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I know she's, she's so excited and they're both so excited. They actually are now inseparable. Like when I text one of them, one of them loops me in or like, it's never, I can just get to one of them. I have to have them both at all times. They're working on like, how they can perform together after this. They're like, they are, Priyanka says Lindsay is the most beautiful person she's ever seen. And Lindsay's like, Priyanka needs to teach me how to do makeup. Like, I think it's just going to be us watching two BFFs have a great time. Like that is actually what I think is going to be. And I'm really excited about it. I'm also really excited to know what Priyanka's wearing cause she will not tell anyone. So. I want like Lindsay and her to wear full denim onesies, but you know, that's just my, it's just my thought. 
do like a Britney yeah. Spears and Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and at the yeah. CMAs, there's like lots of awards to be won. Like there's lots going on, but it's not just for the artists. There's many awards going to musicians, radio stations, yeah. so many different things. How does someone get nominated for these awards in the first place? Well, there's many ways. There's a, there's a few ways. Some categories are sales-based, right? So that will really depend on how successful your um, song was or your album or, you know, anything around that. Um, and then some are submissions-based. So you can get submitted. And then the rest is all based on how, like, the year that the artist had. So there is definitely an eligibility period, right? You have to have music out during a certain time for every year. And um, I don't know all the dates off by heart, but, um, but there are definitely, there's definitely criteria to be considered. And then it just depends on your year. And then for the submission ones, if someone submits you, you know, for, and then, um, and then outside of that sales categories. So a few ways, definitely. Um, but I guess the number one thing is you have to have music out that is falls within the, the time um, for consideration. Uh, and then, yeah. And then it's kind of your peers kind of submit you. And then there are three kind of voting periods. So if you're a CCMA member, then um, you vote three times, the third time being when you vote for the winners. So it's called ballots. There's a first ballot, second ballot, and third ballot. Yeah. And the third ballot's in process, like picking the winners, you know? <laughs> so. Well, speaking of that, how, so is it mostly if you're a CCMA member, you get to kind of choose, but there's also some fan choices. How are these winners chosen? Sure. Yeah. Um, there is one fan picked. It's called, you know, the Fans Choice Award. Uh, and that is a super exciting, I think that's the award that like almost every artist wants to win because truthfully mm -hmm. it is voted on by the fans there are 10 nominees this year um and i don't know if you guys have been watching any of them on socials but they're definitely like posting and buying and like you know they're definitely into it and i and i think that is the award that really means so much to them because it isn't decided by industry peers or voting process internally at ccma that is 100 percent public facing like fans make the decision um, and I think that's something that people forget that fans do have a voice in who win that, who wins that award. Um, and they have the power and this year it's, you know, sponsored by Amazon Alexa, Alexa music, like muse, Amazon music and Alexa. And so it's kind of fun. You can just say like, Hey, I don't want to say it too loud to set off my whole house system. But if you say like, Hey, Alexa stream, blah, blah, blah. Then if you stream the song and then it's a vote for them, which I think is so amazing. So, um, so yeah, so definitely that way. And then of course there are some categories that are, you know, voted on by industry peers. Um, and then that's how the big announcements are made on Sunday, uh, Monday. That's and super exciting. I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Very excited to see all the winners. Uh, but like we kind of talked about in the beginning, there's awards for the musicians as well as the radio stations and all those other. So why is it important to highlight the industry kind of people in the radio as well as the musicians during the awards? Sure. I mean, first let's talk about musicians. I mean, they are the backbone of literally every show you go to, right? Like if there weren't musicians, there would literally be no music. Like it's, it's kind of, um, impossible to imagine a band without, or a singer without a band, you know? Um, so it's really important to, to highlight the work that they do. And, you know, I think it's easy to forget, like when you think about anyone, Dallas Smith, when you, Dean Brody, like anyone who's on the road and you think about them, you think about Dallas being away from his family, right? He has a wife and kids and but I don't think people generally think about their musicians being away or, you know, Dean's band is called the Brodeo. Um, and they're such a, like <laughs> such a close family on the road, but obviously they all have family as well, you know? So I think it's easy to forget that they also give up the same amount, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important to celebrate 
their talents. I mean, they're all super crazy talented, like let's be honest. And then, you know, the sacrifices that they also make for this job that they've chosen to do. So that's really important. And then, you know, radio and industry folk, cause there's like radio personality of the year and a whole bunch of markets. And then there's, you know, industry person of the year. Um, and truthfully, like, I think what people also forget is like, there are so many pieces involved to it. Like, let's just say a number one single. I mean, there's so many other parts too, but like, even if you just think about a song on the radio, it takes so many people to get a song to the radio, you know, yeah. like it, it's just, um, without all those people, there wouldn't be a song on the radio. So then there wouldn't be a song that fans hear. Like it's, it's honestly this domino effect. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think, you know, it's super important that all of those people are celebrated. They do a lot of hard work too. You know, like I just think about me as a publicist because I work for CCMA and then also artists, um, you know, outside of CCMA time artists throughout the year. And you just think, I recognize like how hard all those people work, right? Like I deal with managers and radio people and producers and master people and people at the studio and um, they all work so hard too. So I think it's so awesome that on Sunday night, so at the gala, that's generally where all that stuff happens. And it's so nice because it's an industry only event, which means they get to celebrate like with friends, you know, and brings everybody together and, I can tell you the cheering and the tears and the screaming and it is it's I would say almost as loud as the actual award show and there's like maybe a fourth of the people <laughs> so it's like such a heartwarming time um and also during the gala like it, they get to celebrate the people who are inducted into the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame you know um so and those are people who have had insane careers, right? This year it's Patricia Conroy and Randy Stark. Randy Stark is the industry builder. And he, honestly, that guy, like when I read his bio, it's so crazy. He like was a radio person, then worked at a label, then started his own label, then started his own management company, then launched the career of like seven artists who you would all know, like, it's so wild what he's done, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just really cool to have those opportunities to celebrate every single part of the music industry. You know, um, because a lot of us have jobs that people don't know about or think about or don't really understand. Like my mom still does not understand my job. Guys. Mm -hmm. So and I've been doing it for 15 years. Um, so I think it's just so amazing for us to say, like, you're doing awesome at that radio station and you're a friggin awesome fiddle player. And, you know, I just think it's really amazing to have that opportunity. And I'm really happy that the CCMA has that gala, you know, to do that. Speaking of like, uh, you know, what we're happy about and excited for, what are you most excited for about this year's awards? Oh my God, that is a really hard question to ask. Um, truthfully, I think, now that I think about it, it's not actually, what I'm just excited about <laughs> is for us all to be together. Um, there is nothing, literally there is nothing that feels like an award show. If you guys have been to one, if your listeners have been to one, an arena doesn't feel like that any other time. Like it just doesn't. It, it is just, everyone is excited to be together. You know, everyone is there for the same reason. And it just, I, I, I'm just excited to feel that again. It's been two years. We haven't had that. And I'm really excited for us all to be together and celebrate together. Um, and fans to be in the room, like, I haven't been to a concert yet, like a, a big concert yet. You know, this is going to be like my first one. And I just think it's going to be so amazing. And I know from the artist perspective, you know, people we've been talking to as we plan for most people, it's going to be their first really big one too. Right. Cause it was summer. So a lot of people were playing, you know, outdoor festivals and all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of the first time we're all going to be together and I will guarantee there will be tears shed. Like I guarantee, like even just if I'm saying for myself, but I know I won't be the only one like for sure. Um, so that's definitely what I'm most excited for. And then I am just super pumped to see, I think there are going to be a few surprises. I'm not on the like actual show production team, so I don't know, but 
there are rumblings of some pretty exciting performance things. Um, and we don't get to see that. Like we don't get to go to rehearsals on Saturday. So like we're doing all the other stuff. Right. So the show truly is, it's like they have it all wrapped up and then they give it to us as a gift on Monday. And it's really cool to see like how things come together. Or if you get in there and you see a snippet of a dress rehearsal or something, if I have to run in and make sure there's so many things that can go wrong backstage. So if I have to like run in and check on something and you see like a tiny bit of dress rehearsal, it's so cool to see like what it actually looks like in the actual show, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are the things I'm most excited for just to actually have a show. Last year we were in a field at Burles Creek. So um, I'm really excited for us all to just be in the same place and hugging each other. I'm excited for the hugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, the uh, speaking of your uh, the hugs from this year, what what is maybe a favorite memory from previous years? Is there um, maybe even give us a, a favorite memory from London specifically the the previous time you were here? I mean, the first thing that jumps out of my brain, I'm gonna say was the carpet. The carpet in 2016 was so amazing. It was warmer out, so we were outside. Um, the carpet will be indoors this year uh, because it, the likelihood of it snowing is very high. Um, so, but we were outside. I, I always forget that street name, but we closed down a whole street. And at the time we had a green carpet, it wasn't red. So it was very much like stuck out. And it was just honestly mayhem in the best way. Like actual, there's a picture of me on that carpet. And I, every time I look at it, I can just feel that energy. Like London came alive in those like 90 minutes, you know? And not that they weren't for the show, but it was the only time that I was like super up close and personal with like rabid country fans. And it was so it was so amazing it was so amazing and the host committee got us this and these are things that other people might not find exciting but the host committee got us this amazing tent like it was so awesome um i love tents because you know my job it's very much part of it um and yeah it was just like everyone was so so excited to be there and I just remember that energy, you know, and that's kind of what I'm carrying with me to get me to London is that like, it's going to be that plus more, I think. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Yeah. Mm. Oh, for sure. It'll definitely be a level up from 2016. I have a feeling kind of, all right. <laughs> uh, country music, we were kind of talking at the beginning. It's very much a love hate kind of genre. There's either people who are diehard country fans would go to every concert and then there's a lot of people that hate it don't want anything to do with it what would you say to our listeners that maybe if they're not a big country fan to kind of encourage them to get out and just check it out yeah i mean i will equate it to my relationship with john mayer okay that's why we're going to start this conversation i um I am not a John Mayer fan. Okay. Like I just, I mean, room for squares, loved that record, but like since then, not a fan. However, I can appreciate more than anyone, his musicianship, his ability to play music, right? He is an incredible talent. So when I have the opportunity to go see him, I will, because I want to see him riff on that guitar because that is what he was like born to do. You know, John Mayer was born to play guitar. And so I like, honestly, I will go anytime to see that. And so I think, you know, first and foremost, I would say every single person who is performing over the course of country music week are incredible talents, like from vocal to musicianship to all of them are incredible talents. So if you're into that kind of thing, like if you've studied music or, you know, if that's your thing, you will find someone who you'll be like, whoa, look at that bass player, like crazy, you know? So that's one thing. Second thing is that like, most people are country fans, they just don't know it yet. So what I would say to people is like, they're like, uh, I don't know, my friends all want me to go, but I'm not sure. I would say like, 
listen to Mackenzie Porter's song with Virginia to Vegas because you're going to be like, oh, I know this song, but I didn't know she's a country singer, right? I mean, that's how Virginia found her. He heard her song on, like, he heard uh, what's the, These Days Remix on pop radio and then, like, called to, like, ask her to do a duet, which is kind of cool. Like, um, maybe check out the Cheat Code song with Lindsay. Maybe check out a few other, like, you know, there are so many people who are doing like kind of crossover or like, you know, Jess Moskaluk's most recent song too. is just like, everyone's kind of bending the genre. And so maybe give a few listens to like the newest stuff and then make your decision, you know? Um, because I feel like, and I feel like a hypocrite saying this because I would have never believed it, but now I truly do. So I feel like it's my job to pass on this information, but I actually think there is, a piece of country music for everyone, you know? And I think if you came, if you're like not sure and you're like, fine, I'll go and have a drink with my friends, you are going to be so surprised. Like you're going to catch yourself tapping your toe, you know, without even trying, like you're going to be trying not to do it, but you're going to be dancing and you're going to be having a fun time. So I guess those are the two things. Just give it a try, you know, get out of the house. Mm -hmm. It's free. There's no excuse not to. Yeah. And you might just, and the thing is, is like, you might find your next favorite artist. Like you might literally, you know, your life might be changed. Your Spotify playlist is about to be severely upgraded. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Getting tickets to Boots and Hearts every year from now on. Yeah. Trust me. I mean, not to talk about another festival, but Boots and Hearts, you're going to like, this is your entry point, And then you're never going to look back. Boots is like your summer setup. And then CCMA is your fall setup. You're like ready to go after this for sure. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So how do people make sure they're there? How do they register for all these amazing events during Country Music Week? How is everyone making sure that they're checking out the fun stuff going on at the CCMAs? Yeah, sure. So as we mentioned earlier, everything is like everything on Friday at, C at CCMA House, so London Music Hall, is free. Um, obviously, we're still you know, in pandemic mode in the sense of like, we have to check vaccination records at the door, all that kind of stuff. So there are capacity issues simply because it will take some time to process and how that works. So, but what I will say is if you have RSVP, your chance of getting in is much higher. So for sure, you can just Google that, you know, CCMA house, all of the links will pop up for RSVPing. Um, it is, I, I think going to be, it, it most definitely not even think most definitely will be easier if you've RSVP to the event so that you have something to say, like I've RSVP that I'm on the list. Um, there will be separate lines when you go to check in and stuff. So, um, all that to say every single venue is subject to capacity. And I mean, truthfully, I know we're all like, Oh, subject to capacity, but that has been the story for all time. Like, let's be honest, you know, everything is subject to capacity. I mean, I've stood outside of a, uh, you know, um, venue on the street in Toronto, on Queen Street in Toronto, standing outside the Rivoli waiting for one person to come out so like I can go in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so, but I would say go on RSVP because the likelihood of you getting in is much higher and come early, especially on Friday and Saturday night. I feel like those are going to be big nights. And as I mentioned, there's probably going to be a few like giveaways or fun prizing, you know, you're not going to want to miss out on that. Um, and all you got to do is honestly Google CCMA house and it'll pop up. Or if you follow at CCMA official on Instagram, they definitely have everything there too. So you can do that as well. Now, uh, is there anything last that we're going to have a game that we want to get into, but is there anything about London? Game. Last that oh God. <laughs> is there anything about London that you're looking forward to this year, uh, about seeing, you know, you mentioned the food spot, which is, uh, already a great mm -hmm. choice, but is there anything in particular other than the, uh, festival about London you're looking forward to? 
Yeah, I'm actually, um, and I don't have all the details on this, but I love Christmas like more than the normal human. Um, I actually bought this year a plant called a Norwood pine because it looks like a Christmas tree. It's tropical, but it looks like a Christmas tree. So I literally have a Christmas tree in my house year round. Um, so I've heard whisperings that there will be this holiday market happening um, downtown. And so number one on my list, like the minute I have a free time, I'm running to said marketplace because I, again, love Christmas. Um, and then I'm also a runner. And I have heard that there are nice places to run in London. So I am looking forward to finding out more about that because obviously, you know, things are really busy, but running is how I kind of like calm myself, you know, center myself. Um, so Natalie, I've been talking to Natalie a lot at Tourism London and she promises me there are some beautiful places to run. So I'm actually really looking forward to that as well. Non-CCMA related. I was gonna. I was gonna say the uh, something we uh, that gets mentioned a lot of times on our episodes is just the incredible bike routes and uh, you know just paths Real. that run throughout uh, trails that run throughout our city. So uh, especially if you're downtown, there's like access to the river and lots of really Amazing. great places yeah. to uh, to go see. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I, if I'm staying at the Double Tree, is it easy to find a running path? I guess that is my main question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm trying to think. Down. I guess maybe I shouldn't have said where I'm staying on this podcast. But <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> we'll, bleep that, we'll bleep that part out. But okay, yeah, great, it, great. it'll be pretty easy. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you just got to get down to Harris Park and then you're connected to everything there. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I have to meet my running. I'm trying to meet a goal for this year. So, you know, got to keep it up. <laughs> amazing. Okay, well, uh, I think we are going to get in our ga into our game. Is that right, Aaron? We are. Guys, are they going to be hard questions? Like, be honest with me here. No, no, no. It's it should be fun. What we're doing? Oh, okay. Is we're gonna. You'll see it on your screen, hopefully. Do you see yep. it? We're doing. We have a lot of them. Can you see it? No, I'm never sure. Yeah, I literally have no idea who this is, so I'm terrified. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay. That's kind of what we're doing is we're wondering how well you know our London local country artists. Oh my God, not at all. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. Oh my God. Okay. That's okay. If not, we'll educate you and educate our listeners as well at the same time. So some of these are, are up for votes right now for the uh, M MDM uh, recording. Okay, yeah. But otherwise, there's been some who have won like Ontario Country Awards, people who have been part of the upcoming like Road to CCMAs kind of thing. We just have five artists and we want to see just if you know any of the local people. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Am I allowed to cheat? <laughs> Kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this first one here, we, uh, there's, we're, we're obviously unsure about this one, but that's okay. Aaron, who, who, do, we, who do we think it is? Or, or did you want to make a guess first? Honestly, I, I feel horrible, but I, she looks so much like Damnit Doyle, but that is showing my age of my life. So <laughs> I know it's not her, but that is my guess. Melissa Megan. Okay. Melissa, Megan. Melissa, I love your hair and your necklace is beautiful. So I hope you do well in your challenge for MDM. Yes, yeah, she's up for the MDM. She did a cover of the song, Beer Never Broke My Heart by Luke okay. Combs right that's who it's by so yeah very talented if you like her vote for it also i feel like i'm showing my stuff where i don't know a lot of country music either but we're gonna keep going <laughs> you know okay. this guy oh my god <laughs> guys i wish i would have known to study i guess this is why it's a game yeah. um he looks like he belongs in the hunter brothers um definitely he's not a hunter brother um but yes i have i'm so sorry i have no idea <laughs> oh no don't worry about it we knew this was going to be hard this is patrick james clark okay okay country singer here in london kind amazing of patrick can't wait to see you play somewhere okay another one up for votes if you like him a lot 
What about this fine lady? Genevieve Fisher! Yeah. There we go! <laughs> yeah. yeah! Awesome. She's a CCMA member. Yes. We, me and Patrick were very lucky. We went to elementary and high school with her, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, no way. Good. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. So she's yeah, done she's one been, out of three. Not horrible. I'm not totally forever. failing. Yeah. She's she's, been yeah, doing yeah, she's been doing this for, for like the whole time we've known her. So we're yeah. happy that she's getting, you were right, Genevieve Fisher, very talented. She was in a Hallmark movie recently that I saw. Amazing. Good for her. Then, I was like, oh my gosh, I know her. Me watching my Christmas movies early again. But this one might be a little hard. Can I get a hint? Is there a hint? Can uh, you give me a hint? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. He had a song come out recently, I think it's called Cold One. Yeah. Looks like a handsome um, young man. He does. I was going to say he if it has a very much a Dustin Lynch vibe, you know, the jaw and the hair and the farmlands in the background. Um, yeah, I'm, this is I would have never guessed. Warren Hargraves. Okay. Warren, I went to a high school with a Warren. Amazing. I will remember. Now I'm going to be so embarrassed when all these people come up to me in London, Ontario during Country Music Week. Well, now so you now know. You <laughs> yeah, now you get to go. I know who we, I know exactly who you are. Don't even Warren. Come and say hi to me if you see me running around. Come and say hi, please and thanks. Yeah. All right, next one. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is really hard. Um, and I'm not gonna cheat. I'm not gonna look on my phone. I'm not gonna like Google image search a la catfish. Um, I guys, I'm really sorry. I have no idea. No, no She's worries. beautiful. Um, if I, she also did a lot of stuff coming into uh, Road to Julia CMAs. Hayes. Julia. Okay. Oh, amazing with Corey. Fantastic. Yes. I'll have to give him the heads up. He has to send me pictures of all these people next time. Yeah. <laughs> get to know all yeah. The, our local country music artists. Well, there's one more. Let's see if you can get two of five. This one might be a little easier. You want to. Aaron, Aaron Allen. Yeah, yes. there we go. Awesome. Not strong. <laughs> Only because, truthfully, um, he told me he would fix my finger tattoo. So, you know, we're going to work on that because he's also a really talented tattoo artist and owns a salon with his, or studio. Is it called studio? With yeah. his wife. Yeah. His wife, mm. yes. It's very, very nice. Cool. Yeah. Two of five, guys, you know, two of five. No, that's, not bad, that's, not bad. that's really good. That's awesome. That is awesome. For someone oh, yeah. who's not I will study London, for next time. Know. No, that was really good. No, now you know we're here to help. We're also here to help our listeners. If they're not country artists, check out their local country musicians. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Talent here. Very I'm going to go add some songs to my Spotify playlist. I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah. going to go learn. Uh, well, Tiffany, that does kind of uh, wrap up our episode. Uh, we really want to take this opportunity to thank you again for sitting down and speaking with us uh, this evening. Uh, being able to talk to you about this incredible award ceremony and the festival leading up to it, as well as just like promoting all these incredible Canadian, art Canadian artists. This is a really great time. So thank you so much for uh, for doing this with us. Oh my God, guys. Thank you. I had the best time. It was way less stressful than I thought. You know, I was really going to, I thought I was going to sweat stress the whole time, but I didn't at all. You were amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. Is before we let you go, is there anything else you kind of want to plug, make sure our listeners know about the upcoming festival and award ceremony? No, I think the most important thing is just to be sure to RSVP for Friday and Saturday. Um, Friday is really close to capacity. We're like, it's real close now. So, um, do that for Friday and Saturday. We'll be getting there super quick too. So make sure you do that. And then for sure tickets to the CCMA awards. Um, and then just make sure to tune in, you know, country 104 in London is our broadcast partner. Uh, because they're part of the chorus family. So I'm pretty sure in the coming weeks, they'll have very like some exciting, probably giveaways and, you know, even just exciting news of things that they're going to be doing in and around London surrounding the CCMA awards. So tune in there if you can. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Get your tickets, come and hang out with Aaron and Patrick 
and I at the CCMA Awards. Yes, I can't wait. We'll be all around the festival. So if you're listeners, you see us, come talk to us. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the CCMAs and all the fun stuff you're excited to see this upcoming weekend. Hi, everyone. I'm Tiffany Astle, founder of Penelope PR and head of communications for the CCMA. And you're listening to the London's Pretty Cool podcast.